What up, everybody? This is Rob Brandt. And this is Rick Brandt, and we are the Brothers Brandt. Welcome back to episode 110, NFL linebacker of the Los Angeles Chargers, Damon Lloyd. Uh, sure. We're going to be talking all about uh, Damon's uh, career in high school, uh, as a, as a going to college uh, as a small school player with big dreams of making it to the NFL. And uh, now he's on the Chargers. So super exciting stuff. Really excited to have you on, Damon. Uh, thanks for being on. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's going to be it's going to be a fun, fun story to tell, man. And I'm looking forward to it. I really am. I enjoy we talking. Are too. We are, too. Our listeners are excited about this, Damon. You have just, I think, one of the most inspiring stories that I personally have ever heard in sports. So we all know how hard it is to become a professional athlete. And you have achieved that dream that so many set out to be. And we want to talk about that journey and what it took, all the obstacles that you overcame to reach your dream of becoming an NFL player. And I think we should start in high school where you were named Mr. Football in the state of Maryland. You led the state of Maryland in tackles as a linebacker and you took your high school team to a state championship. Walk us through what it was like in high school and really becoming the star player that you ended up becoming your junior and senior year. Man, um, high school was a, was a rough time and like, my genetics were fighting me in high school. So like basically, I mean, freshman year, um, I ended up going to John Carroll my freshman year, had a whole different coach there. Um, he brought me in, wanted to play linebacker and fullback. And I mean, at the time I loved playing fullback, uh, like all of my rec years, my little league years played fullback, um, transitioned to linebacker my last year of rec. And like, and that was, uh, I think I was pretty good at it. I don't even think I know what I was doing. Um, and then going into high school, my freshman sophomore year man I was getting chubby like I just couldn't I couldn't do nothing about it like my body my genetics whatever puberty was just it was just going rampant on me so um ended up like hybrid between fullback guard linebacker three technique like off the edge man I would play I would literally play everything and um and I mean I was blessed enough because like I had the IQ I could I knew how to play football um, so, I mean, no matter what position I was at, I was able to be successful and kind of mold and, and adapt to what I had to do, whatever job I had. So fast forward uh, to the good years. I mean, junior, senior year, junior year, John Carroll, we lost four or five games. We won like five and four. It was actually a bad year. We lost four games in total by 10 points. So rough year, like a lot of, a lot of the guys that came in, I transferred in um three of my best friends transferred in so we kind of were in a new program new school whatever um but literally that last game of the year my junior year we all kind of looked at each other because we that was a game we lost by I think two points we were like yeah we're not gonna lose again like this is this is it like and then we went to our literally the day after we lost that game worked out every single day speed work uh field work uh shout out to my coach coach Keith um he has one of the best gyms in Maryland where we trained at. So we're literally there from the day we lost that game all the way up until the 707 aspect of how football works in high school and then all that other stuff that goes on with it. Um, and then literally, I mean, yeah, just worked at my game. Like I had a great, like great friend group. I'm still, we're still all best friends to this day. We were all just grinding, um, working on our game. I really developed my linebacker game, just kind of, losing lost a lot of weight um and it, and it kind of came with I mean growing up as well like I couldn't like I said I couldn't fight puberty I couldn't fight what was happening to my body when I was younger like I wasn't gonna starve myself and like be a bodybuilder you know what I mean so um and shout out to the bodybuilders but <laughs> I kind of like yeah, no, no offense to them but like I'm just, that's just not me <laughs> like I'm yeah. just not gonna do that um but basically yeah like my senior year um, I couldn't even really tell you how. It was just like we just knew we were going to be some dogs. Like that's what it came down to. Um, we ended up, yeah, going 12 and 0, won the, the, the state or the private school state championship. Um, yeah, like you said, uh, led the state in tackles. I think I had like 175 or something like that. Dude, these, um, these stats, yeah. by the way, let me just jump in here, Damon. Like yeah. these stats, like when I was reading them, because obviously I know Darius and I was just like, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, let me brush up on, on Damon. Let me look at these right. stats. 
And I literally thought like someone like just smashed their fingers on the numbers. And I was just like 175 <laughs> tackles. <laughs> yeah, I was going crazy. Like, and that's the thing where, and it probably could have been more because a lot of the times I got subbed out um, in like third quarter if we were blowing the team out. But <laughs> it, it Easy was like two hundred. We'll just we'll just round up and call yeah, it. like it could it could have been crazy in the same thing. And, and we'll get in league of the college could have been the same thing. But um, yeah, literally, I mean, high school. Because the thing is, high school football is like I tell guys at this day, like the dudes. If I ever talk to some high school kids, like they don't understand how simple of a game high school football is. <laughs> like you're out there, literally a gap, b gap, c gap. Like you don't, you really have very rarely any line movements. The offense is either going to run slant, pose, digs. Like they're they're not going to run anything complex. Um, so like they, but you don't know that in a moment because you're in high school as well. So, um, moving on, I guess from that, yeah, like that year, recruiting was weird for me because like I was a five eleven linebacker. Um, obviously wasn't the fastest on this like on the field. Like I was just a very productive linebacker. And then my SAT on top of that was garbage. Like, my SAT was really bad. Um, and the thing is, what boned me is my freshman and sophomore year, I didn't realize how important school was. Like, I didn't know – I'm the first college football player – college player period in my family. So, we nobody understood you had to, like, have a good grades to, your first two years in high school to go to play college football. Um, so yeah, like my GPA, my first year, you're, was wait, you're the, you're the first, uh, college, like person in your family go to college, you're saying, or no, nah, like the first athlete. So I had my, my grandmother, athlete. like my grandmother, okay. my aunt, my mom, they went to college, like they're, okay. they're all nurses and all that. They yeah, all do the yeah, whole yeah. thing there. But I mean, the same thing, they want a whole different path too, like community college and stuff. So like, that's even more different, like going to community college first and like doing that whole transition. Yeah. But like, for me. I, I wanted to, I found out, I guess you can play football and I really had no idea how it worked. I didn't know how to get there. And then until my, my junior year, when I, when I transferred to John Carroll, uh, my advisor, I'll never forget. She was like, yeah, you need to get like a 3.5 in, in order to get into any college, like <laughs> regardless. I had like a 2.0 or something like that cumulative oh. um, for my freshman and sophomore year. But I mean, it, when she told me that though, locked in, like I think my junior year I had like a 3.6 and then my senior year I had like a 3.9. Wow, like I went cra- awesome. I went crazy, yeah, but it didn't help because then again my SAT wasn't great. Um, never like I never got a tutor and again. Didn't know how important the SAT was. Like they told me, I didn't know how hard it was gonna be. Like I didn't, I didn't know anything going into it. I literally just signed up for it, paid for it. it was like, all right, like I'm just gonna go in and take the test. Now, now I got I got to pause <laughs> here and tell you a funny story because there's a, yeah. a fantasy football group that I play with and. Uh, the, the stakes are, are hilarious, Damon, uh, you know, and, and one of these, this, this past year, the loser had to go and sign up for the SAT and take the <laughs> SAT. And these are all guys in their thirties, but they had to go and take like whatever, a six hour test. <laughs> that is an awesome bet. So, that is so one of our, one of our buddies had to do that. And then. <laughs> Did he get his results? What did he, what did he get? I forget. Like, I'll, I'll get oh back to you on it. Gosh. I'll circle back. That is, that is they were like, probably I, horrific. I would have never thought about that as being a, a, a punishment on a pet. Yeah, the loser, the loser, the worst person in the league had to do that. That <laughs> is a – what a great idea. Like, that's so much better than, like, making them do, like, a public stint or something. Like, yeah, go take the SAT. Like, they, nobody's <laughs> going to know. They're the only one that has to live with that. Like, they're the only one. <laughs> What a so, great idea. So, Damon, you are crushing it on the football field. You're working out with Coach Keith. You're getting yep. into shape, and you're picking up the grades, and recruiting starts to happen your junior, senior year. How did that process go? And ultimately, you ended up going to college at Indiana University of Pennsylvania, the yep. Red Hawks, which are just outside of Pittsburgh. How did that all come about? So, basically – um, yeah, so like like I was kind of saying, like recruiting was iffy because again, five eleven linebacker, whatever, um, kind of was it, it was weird, man. So basically, what happened was based off of like my SAT, whole bunch of different things going on. My school, private school, so you know, like the Ivy leagues are coming, the Patriot leagues are coming. Uh, like those are the schools that were that were really recruiting us because we they expected whatever academic prestige. Basically, like I talked to like Holy Cross, I talked to Buck, I talked to a lot of smart schools, 
a lot of them are like, yeah, you need to get a perfect SAT in order to come here. <laughs> like, just based off of my, my GPA and all that, like no matter how well I did my past two years, it didn't matter because my, my first two years in high school. So um, what ended up happening is, so I was getting a lot of interest from uh, Howard University. I was getting a lot of interest from HBCUs. Uh, Morgan State was, was probably my top school at one point. And then um, I was also like, I didn't really care about going division one though. Like I was, I simply just knew I needed to go to college for free. Like I knew that my, my family situation financially, like I wasn't going to be able to, to not go to college and, and, and have my mom pay for it. Like there was no way. So that was what my mind was on throughout the whole recruiting process. So I took every single opportunity of whatever school that was interested in me and, and went and visited, no matter if it was D2, D1, division three, whatever. So ended up like, if I can recall correctly, ended up like reducing my list down to like Morgan State. Um, and then I want to say UC Davis ended up coming in pretty late from a, one of the coaches that recruited me. UC Davis. UC Davis. UC yeah, so University of California, they, Davis. Yep, yep. Right wow. up the street from here, right down the street. Wow. So like, yeah. So basically what happened with that is one of the recruiters from IUP, the linebackers coach, went to UC Davis hmm. like midway through recruiting me. And then he wanted to kind of, get me out here and then and, and offer me a scholarship and then basically on the phone with him I was like considering it considering it and I was I started thinking about my mom I was like there's no way my mom could survive with me being all the way out here for college no way so um kind of shot that down right away and then um and then like I said division one was not a priority for me uh so India so IUP came in the window uh Bowie State like a lot of the division twos that that really liked me, they they offered me like full ride scholarship, which was a blessing. And then IUP was just a school that was a medium sized school. It was a, a program that was based on winning traditionally, the big family aspect. So committed to IUP kind of on, I committed on my visit. Um, I didn't even have a fun visit. Like didn't even go to a party or nothing. I just, I just knew like I wanted to win. Um, I knew what the money was looking like and then from there, I was like, I'll figure it out from there. And, that, and then the, also the degree I wanted to get in exercise science was something that I really wanted to do, too. So on top of all three of those things, it was a no brainer to go to IUP and it was the best decision I made. I love that. That's so cool. You are talking to two of the biggest mama boys you'll meet. And it sounds yeah. like yeah. your mama's boy as well. So we got oh, three on the podcast. <laughs> and 100 percent. So you get there and the winning keeps going just where you left off in high school, your senior year, you guys yep. keep winning in college, right? Yeah. Yeah. We, I don't think I only lost six games in college or something like that. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's like six or seven, something like that. Yeah. We, we did lose a lot. And when, we, when we did lose, we were like, it was, it was a bad thing when we lost. So, um, and, and yeah. you personally, you were an all American, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, I was all American twice. I was all American my sophomore year and my senior year. Um, wow. Probably could have been junior year, but that was the the worst year we had. We won eight and three, and like eight and three at IUP is basically like going two and seven. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, we oh we gosh. like those. If we would have went two and seven, went eight and three, it would have been the same thing. Like the yeah. coaches would have been the same. It didn't matter. So I want um, to I want to jump in here, Rick, right, because I got. I, prior to this, like I said, I was getting to know you and like looking at the numbers and all that stuff. And then I was like, I, of course I went on YouTube and watched your highlight tape. Yeah. And, and I was like, I was like, dude, like this guy's savage. You're like, yeah, no, I was like, like, I was like, like you're crumbling high school and all people that. across the middle. I go, yeah. I go, oh my God. Like there were like, my wife looked at me and she goes, you okay? I go, yeah, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. I just <laughs> felt the pain for that uh, slot wide receiver right there. Yeah. yeah. College, man, I had a few, I had a few of those, like where I was just laying dudes out, man. I was just like, <laughs> I didn't get the penalty. Like but I never got told no. So I was like, whatever. Like, <laughs> there were, it was uh, there was one moment, Damon, in your highlight tape, and if you go back and watch it on YouTube, like it, it felt like I was watching a car accident. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, they just circled him. Yeah, I see that guy coming across the middle. Like, yeah, man, God. it was bad. It was that was college was a fun time, and then like, yeah, yeah like you know, the accolades started coming in, like whatever, all American, all conference yeah. region, dude, and it was just three hundred and eighty-two tackles. Yeah, like, yeah, that's insane. Like three time all conference, three time all region, two time all American, and you led your team to what the semifinals or the, the championship for D2 football? 
Yeah, so we went – so my sophomore year, we won our conference championship and then won the regional championship and then ended up losing to Western Flor- or West Florida um, in the semifinals, which was like – I mean, hey, respect to West Florida, but it was like they had transfers from all over the place. We were just out there just trying to survive. And we had guys failing drug tests. We had guys hurt. Like it was, it was a, a <laughs> bad game, man. We were just in there just trying to survive. And we, I mean, we only lost by I think like ten points, so it was fun. But it was like from that moment, I don't know. I'm not sure what happened in the program, but <clears throat> I mean, we just kind of we had a weird transition of like from that winning point where we knew how to get there, but sustaining the success was kind of our problem. And then, I mean, at the same time, other teams are good too. Like, like Shepard, the team that beat us my senior year in the playoffs, like that's a a dog team and they're, they're really good team. So that's just how it goes, man. Football is football. At at what point? So, so in high school, you know, you go to IUP and then you're at IUP. At what point are you like, maybe I could play pro. Like, like, was it in high school? Was it like, like, did you have that ambition in high school? And then at what point at IUP were you just like, this could happen? Yeah. So in high school, I didn't care, man. Like my only priority was to go to college for free. Yeah. Um, like, I guess, and to be honest with you, I never had like the, the dream, like the quote unquote, I honestly, I guess never evaluated my talent until, and then leading into your question now, like until like my junior year, after my sophomore year being all American and all that, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty good. Like, I think I like, and my coaches, like, they didn't, my coaches didn't mention it because I mean, they know the reality of playing Division Two and going to NFL is slim to none. Like, it's, it's a, it's, it's a very hard thing to do. So, my junior year, I, nothing changed mentally. Like, I didn't change anything about myself. Like, I still, school was number one. Like, I graduated uh, college with a 3.7 GPA. Like, I was, made sure school wow. was what I wanted to Congrats. do. Because like, that's, that's what awesome. I went to college for. Yeah, Love I appreciate that. it. Love that. Yeah, especially coming from, like, 2.0 GPA in high school. So, like, <laughs> um, but, but I, I went to IUP knowing that I wanted to graduate. Like, I didn't. I didn't have any ambition really for football after college. Like I knew that that was my first goal. And then, like I said, junior year started realizing, it. I was like, I'm pretty good, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then senior year, same thing, didn't change anything, went through the season. And then once the season ended, scouts started coming in or they would come in during practice as well. So I would talk to different scouts during practice or wow. they would get information on me, start doing stuff. Like they'll pull me out of class and like start talking to me and all that. So that's when I, it kind of became a reality. And I was like, I, I know I could ball. I knew I was a dog. I just didn't know what it took. Like, I didn't know what, like, the criteria to make it to the professionals was what it was. You didn't, so, you didn't but, know what you didn't know. You didn't. Yeah, exactly. Like, I didn't have, like, an older, an, an OG or whatever, somebody to kind of tell me the game on, like, how to make it or whatever. So basically what ended up happening is that, that time period when I was getting interviewed and all that, um, the Canadian Football League is super connected uh, with with uh, IUP. So we, we had a few guys go up there from the program like throughout the years. And I talked to every single Canadian team my senior year. And they all were like, we, you, you can play like you, you're a ball, you can ball. And once the Canadian League started talking to me, I said, why can't I was like, why, why not the NFL then? Like, I started kind of plotting out and then I like started doing a little bit of research, like looking at different linebackers that's made it over the years. I'm like, why like I can do this like I don't see why I'm a, I'm a dog as well um and then just just knowing how I play and my lot my, my linebackers coach he was a guy that he kept me very humble and not in the sense of like talking down on me but he kept it real with me kept it realistic with me and no matter how many times he like said I was a, a great linebacker he also reminded me like I play division two ball like the chances of making it are not very high so and the thing is, I never hung my hat on it, never hung my hat on making it to the professionals. Um, I was just like, if it happens, it happens. If not, then I that's why I went to college. Like, I want to go do something with it. So, so how did your yeah. day come about? Man, so what a nightmare. So basically, I mean, I came out, my draft year was the, was the COVID year. So again, doesn't help playing Division Two during the COVID year. Um, so I, I trained at Test Academy up in New Jersey for uh two and a half like three months or whatever 
went through that whole process and March 16th was my pro day. Literally got a call on the 15th Sunday night, like packed my bag, had everything ready to go all the way up to uh, Pittsburgh to go through my pro day. They called me Sunday night, like it's canceled, like COVID. That's when like the, like the lockdown really started happening um, and canceled the pro day. I had a pro day uh, that same week with Duquesne on a Wednesday. Happened again. Two canes canceled, like the Steelers, I think. Uh, Steelers, Philly, like there was a few teams that wanted to see me specifically canceled. Um, and then I had local days lined up with uh, Baltimore, Philly, and Washington canceled like that following week. So once all of that happened in that sequence, I came to reality of like, I'm not, like I'm probably not going to get picked up. Like I knew, I knew being realistic, I knew I was going to get drafted, but me and my agent and I, we were banking on like we 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 can have a good chance of making a, a camp at least. After all that got canceled, there was no way. So I had to basically I was home or I was already home. Um, again, shout out to Coach Keith. Did my pro day at the gym that I trained at and has a whole indoor facility, or whatever. Ran my forty. Did the whole looks night. nice. Looks nice. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like I, that's the best I could do, man. Like. Had uh, had somebody recorded for me. Had my literally everybody in that video or all my friends from from home. Or, <laughs> like no scouts could be there. Like all, one of, I all thought I thought that was when I was looking at the YouTube video. It's yeah. I think it's red and black in there. I think that was like the colors yep. I saw, yep, and I was yep. just like I thought that was IUP's campus. I was like, oh. Oh, heck no! Oh my gosh, heck no! I wish. <laughs> no, we don't have no, <laughs> no, we have no indoor facility there. I mean, man, you ask anybody, and no, we ain't have none of that. Uh, <laughs> so it was a blessing to be able to be there. Um, and then again, like, shout out to my friends that helped me out. We had the whole laser jar where we had people doing the measurements for me, and it was the best that we could do. My agent sent it out to all the CFL teams and all that, sent it to whatever scouts that were talking to me for the NFL. And then, yeah, that's, that's basically all I could do. So a couple months go by and the draft takes place. And as you said, with COVID and all the obstacles there with being in person with folks, that just really doesn't come to fruition. But if I'm correct here, it was June, was it June 18th? Did you get a phone call in June? Did somebody reach out to you then? Um, I can't really recall that date specifically, but I can kind you're, of just you're asking the, you're asking this guy June 18th. Like I forget <laughs> what I, I forget what I eat for breakfast over here. Like, I thought That's I read something good. about you signing on June 18th. I thought that'd be a memorable a day you wouldn't <laughs> forget. This past year? Last year. Oh, oh, I mean, yeah. That, oh, yeah, with the so I mean we're kind of skipping past a lot of stuff though from, from yeah, June come on, 18th. Let's <laughs> right, right, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> but there's, I mean, and I, that's the thing. Like, I want to be able to kind of get you the whole story because it, yeah. it's freaking That's nuts. what I want to hear. That's what yeah. I want to hear. David, I'm going to chop this up. We're going to edit that up. I, I apologize no, for my brother. He's a little slow. He's jumping ahead God, of the it's all, stuff. It's all good. Man. Honestly, <laughs> like, I, and that's the thing, like, and I'm not even saying it for me. Like, I, I want to, whoever's in my shoes or whoever would want to be watching this, I want them to, to understand if you really want to get to this level and throughout all the adversity that I'll talk about, like it can happen, but it also can't happen. So that, that's, I, I just don't want to skip over stuff. Cause I just understand that there, there's people that are, that are probably going to want to see this and be like, this is the reality of what, what this profession is. Um, yeah. So, I mean, so I guess, yeah, before, before June 18th with the charges, I'm assuming you're talking about when I signed, um, ended up. So, so after the draft happened, uh, 2020, Ended up, uh, my agent got it all set up to go. I was going to go sign and play with Montreal up in the CFL. You know, I was excited for that because I was like, that's what I, that was realistic. I knew the CFL route was a realistic thing for me to make it to whatever level I want to play at. Um, so basically, literally had the contracts, talked to the GM, going to sign with Montreal. That's where I was going to play football. That was in like May. June comes by, we're still talking, like still haven't signed yet because COVID still is going on in Canada. Um, and they had, I mean, their cases were a lot worse than ours. So it was up in the air. We had no communication really. July comes by, same thing. Like this is when they tell us they're cutting 33% of the contract. Like there, there's a lot of different stuff going on in the CFL, but like I didn't care because I just knew I needed to get film. I knew I just wanted to play ball. August comes around cancel it season canceled 
So like those three months, everybody, myself and like other people I know, we're just training, working out, working out, working out, like trying to just be ready for whenever camp, because when that call was going to come, camp was going to be like that next week. Yeah. So like we had to just stay, stay in shape and stay ready. Now you working at the same time too? Yeah. So I was delivering pizzas. I was door dashing. I was working at the gym um, and I was also taking a spring class because I had th- literally three credits left to graduate. Wow. So took a, took my, my capstone class, um, delivering pizzas. Like it, it was, it was nuts, man. Like it, 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 going it. through the whole thing, man. So like <laughs> just grinding, like that's, I mean, same, yeah. like I, that's all I knew how to do. And then at the same, I was training uh, younger high school kids, like how to play linebacker, doing the whole thing, man. Like, and I, and I enjoyed it for the most part. Some of the middle school kids, I mean, I'm sure y'all y'all know how it goes with middle schoolers. Like, I don't know, man. I, I, I knew that's not what I wanted to do with my life. <laughs> like, when I was done with that, <laughs> I was like, yeah, I, I can't train these kids. I can't do that. Like, that's <laughs> not what I can do. Um, but, yeah, basically, after that moment, though, like, after August hit, season's canceled, I, like, kind of evaluated my situation and, and wrapped up my agent. I was like – I can't, like, I can't give it up yet. Like, there's no, I, no one told me no yet. If a scout or somebody, if I would have went to a camp or whatever and somebody would have been like, you're just, you just can't do it. You're not good enough. I would have been cool with that. I would have been like, cool. Hung my cleats up, got my degree, got my certification. I would have been cool if I went to grad school or whatever. Um, And yeah, that, that was, that was like that whole situation in COVID and all that, man. So it, and then you want me to just keep rolling through it? Dude, yeah, let's go. Come on. Yeah. This, this right. is awesome, man. So, this like, is great. I, this, I, is I the juice. this is the juice I inside the, the orange. It is, man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the juice, facts. I'm squeezing it. Facts. Uh, so, like, basically, man, so after that whole thing happened, um, quarantine's going down. I'm, I mean, y'all know how it went. Was in the crib. I had to sneak to the gym. Like, like again, shout out to Coach <laughs> Keith. Um, God, he gave me the password to the gym. I was in there dolo just in there working out running lifting everything solo um and then i had a friend one of my good friends josh woods he plays for the uh detroit lions right now me and him and then he joined up in the summertime we're just working out doing the whole thing like is he was stopping. he an undrafted free agent as well yep yep he was also undrafted he he came out i think like 2018 or something like that um where, real good where, friend of where mine. Did he go to school did he go to like a d2 no nah, he played in maryland so i mean you feel oh. me like he played in maryland so I hope he would make it, and I hope he sees this. I hope he – because we have a whole argument about that, no uh, about being, a, being an underdog and all that. So, I mean, I'll get into him eventually. But um, <laughs> anyway, and then basically, yeah, so that whole year training, training, training. And then my agent calls me about the spring league, which is like – I had no idea what the spring league was. I was like, you're telling me I have to go play for free. Like, that's that's the idea of the spring league, which is like, – it's a blessing – to go down there and play so I went down in Houston May like 2nd or something I think uh actually like April 28th or something like that um flew down to Houston had to pay for my flight and all that they had us in a hotel it was four teams down there I know have y'all watched any of the USFL games yes sir yeah so same organization same people that run it whatever so we're down there six games uh one of the craziest situations I've ever been in to play football. And I'm extremely grateful for the spring league to allow me to come down there and play. But at the same time, man, it was hard to stay healthy, man. Cause it was just like, we're in first off in Houston, my first time ever being in Houston in the summer. It's hot, humid. It was humid. one of the worst humid. climates I've ever been in my life. Like I tell, <laughs> I tell people to this day, like I would never want to go back to Houston. Like, I, can never, <laughs> I can never, I can't live there. No vacations. Don't nobody get married down there. None of that. So, um, and you told all your yeah. friends if you get married in Houston, yeah, I'm, like, send I, you a I'm, nice I'm, gift. I'm gonna send I, you. Yeah, I'll send a gift. I can't be there. I'm sorry. If you're wearing a tuxedo, if, you if you've got to go down and play the Texans, you're gonna be uh, sick that week. Man, that's the thing. Like, <laughs> nah. man, gratefully, the Texas stadium's indoors, so it's like whatever. They got that AC bumping. Yeah, right? like, good. <laughs> in there. But um, yeah, so like down in Houston, man, played six games down there. Uh, all the games were on like Fox Sports and all that. So I mean. It was a great avenue to ball out and get noticed. And and I remember, like, sidetracked, like, week four, man, I was ready to quit. I was ready to give it up, man. I was, I was like, why? A day. It was, why were you, it was why a were lot you of things. Quit? 
there was a lot of things going on, man. Like down there, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with football. It was, uh. it was external stuff. It was like, and I, I mean, I sound like I'm complaining, but like it was the climate. It was our like training room situation, recovery. We didn't have much of it. Um, I bet people did quit. Yeah, th- no, there was a lot of people that, that 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 ended up getting out of it. And like at the same time, the crazy part is you can get cut. So like there was dudes getting cut. Like my roommate got cut. We were going through like it was just a it was just a mental whirlwind, man. And the thing is, like, I would ball out in these games, but like I was dumb depressed. Like I was super depressed, like throughout mm. like most of the time there. And then gratefully, I mean, shout out to my guys that I played with, and I'm still real cool with them to this day. They all kind of like we kind of, and this is where I developed that take my mind away from football thing where I didn't want to talk about football. I didn't want to like, and we all kind of were like that. And then we just bonded and came, became a cool friend group. And then football wasn't necessarily in like the externals wasn't what I was stressed about no more. I was just down there enjoying my time, just playing ball. Um, and then, yeah, basically came out healthy, gratefully. Um, and then literally came back home. And like I said, getting ready to quit. I was like, came back home. I was at my grandma's house. Um, this is that day, yeah, June, or no, no, not that day, but like June 14th, June 13th. At my grandma's house, like breaking leaves or something, like helping her for, for, for the garden. It was something outside. And basically, I get this, this phone call from this California number. I was like, I don't know anybody from California. Like, who could be calling me from there? Like, <laughs> none of like my brain is like, there's no. Why would the charge? Why would anybody on the West Coast be calling? Me? So I like, I'm like, let me answer this phone. Answer it. <laughs> blah, blah blah. Like from the from the Los Angeles charge. Blah, blah. I'm like, I'm like, is, is this real? Like, I had to ask the guy. Like, I was like, is because I remember at that point at that time, like, this time last year, there were like different stories about dudes lying about being scouts on like Twitter and stuff and. There was like different things going on and then social media. So I was skeptical. I was like, yeah, like, ha- have you talked to my agent yet? And blah, blah, blah. He's like, no, 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 no. I slept with my agent's info and then my agent called me back. He was like, yeah, like, this is this is legit. Like, this is the charge. I was like, oh, crap. So that basically that next day, they flew me out here, had to do like five, six physicals. And then, yeah, I was a Los Angeles Charger on the 18th. It was, it was freaking nuts like that. And then so basically on that day at my grandma's house, I texted my agent. I said, John, I have two weeks left. If I'm not picked up in two weeks, I'm I'm hanging the cleats up. Like I told him that straight up. Like I didn't want to, didn't want to train no more. Didn't want to go through the the uh, the un the uncertainty of the situation. Like not knowing if I'll be playing, if I will. And dude, the Chargers called me two days after that text. So yeah, it was, wow. it was nuts. So like wow. yeah, somebody like, somebody was listening to you. Yeah, and like they were listening. They were watching on Fox, I hope, and like, and and then that's that's what it came down to, man. Like, I was just down there balling. Um, our defense was super simple, obviously. Like, we only played six games, so it was like what I produced on film was like my raw abilities, and that was the blessing of playing in the spring league. Like, they allowed you yeah. to showcase it as long as you were healthy. Like, you could do what you could do. Were the stats um, like I I don't I didn't look up the spring stats. Sorry, I didn't get that. Yeah, yeah they, didn't even track, they didn't track no stats. <laughs> I, I don't even know where you could look those up. <laughs> like you like, can't, what, like what, what no were stats. they? Like were they were they were they like popping off the page on, on some games or were they like uh it was it was like the film that really got you? It was both it's like I mean, if you watch the game, I was making I was making a lot of plays, I was definitely making a lot of tackles. Um mm-hmm. and then like there were one or two games where I had some really good plays. Like I had interception, like the second to last game had um, just a lot of quality linebacker play. Uh, again, I was like just playing ball and making a lot of plays. I uh, played all the spe- like special teams. I was flying on kickoff, like making, making good plays on kickoff. So like I did everything that I could control. I, you know, I just, I just knew I could play ball. Um, what do you think? And, then, yeah. and I should have, I should have asked you this a while ago, but, I know you said your IQ is just your football IQ. You could play like, like anywhere when you got yeah. around, but like, what do you think is like your top three qualities as a, as a linebacker, you know, six, six foot linebacker? Like, what do you, what do you think are your top three qualities? Um, I mean, it's definitely my instincts are what is, is, and that's it's something that's just a natural ability. Um, my instincts is for sure. Number one. Um, my physicality, like toughness. I mean, I have like being a being a five eleven six foot linebacker. I have leverage, so I mean, 
I can get under things, I can blow things up. Um, and then just kind of like the the willing to just to want to be great, like not necessarily like I guess necessarily in the inspirational aspect, but I just cannot be denied. Like mm-hmm. I can't picture in my head losing a rep. Like that's that's like a quality of mine that people you can't you don't know it until like you watch me play and like the grittiness on how I play. So yeah, instincts, toughness, and just the the willing to not be denied, man. Like that's those are my attributes. And you you yeah. remind me, I, I I don't know if you know Sam Mills. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I've heard that a few times. Yep. Yeah. Dude, like you're like it's just like I'm, I'm just like yeah. so excited. And Sam Mills is from Long Branch, New Jersey, which is the town next to us, and he went to yeah. like montclair state and stuff yep wow. yeah man he was a dog man yeah that, that was a comparison i got a lot when i was uh in college and all that and coming out into the pros like that was a guy that like him like london fletcher was another one like there was a few guys yeah. that was just the smaller guys that just defied the odds just like i want a ball man. yeah like, london no, fletcher too played for the can. played for the uh redskins or the washington football team now so it was like yeah. right, in your, right yeah. in your backyard yeah man and that, yep watched him growing up as well and it was like again, like I like I wasn't a big football, like I didn't really because again, my family, nobody really played sports. So like we didn't really watch a lot of football. Like my for my favorite team growing up was the Colts, just because I liked the colors. Like I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even like necessarily and then once I got into it, it was like, all right, cool. Like I like Reggie Wayne and Marvin Harrison was like my guys. And then like yeah, it turned into um Antoine Bethay and then like Bob Sanders, and like I started to really understand football yeah around like eight, nine years old. And now I was like, Oh, I love it now. Like that's what I like to do. Well, so, side, side, side note on the colors, because if you like colors, you're on you're on the team that has like, in my opinion, yeah. the coolest jerseys in the NFL. Yeah, our alter, especially our, our 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 alternative jerseys. So like oh. our navy blue ones and our royal, those are so crazy. <laughs> Fire. Um, fire. Yeah, and then the combinations with the, yeah, with our yellow and white and, like, blue and white or whatever, like, yeah, we're real crisp. I, I, I definitely love the way I look at them, for sure. So, so, so uniforms right. uniforms are clearly one of the best parts about being on the Chargers. SoFi Stadium's probably got to be right up there with it. Talk to us about some of your favorite things now as you got settled in on the team, and you did have to overcome an injury I, I read about, right? Yeah, so – Basically, I got with the Chargers. Um, I was like the last addition to the defensive room um, in the beginning of training camp last year. So only new guy, early skill position guy, trying to learn the defense in a week. And I can't, I mean, I can't give you too much detail, but we have like one of the most complex defenses in the league, just off of how many packages we have, different blitzes. Like we have a lot of terminology to know. So that first week, man, I'm stressing. Like I'm like, dude, don't really know what to like how I'm going about it. Um, and then basically, yeah, so went through camp. Um, the reps that I got, man, I was making plays, and that's what it came down to. Like every rep I would get, I had to show up on the film. That's what my linebackers coach told me. And one of the and coach Will Hoyt is one of the best coaches I've been around, and he just kept it real with me, like, yo, you have to show up. And no matter if I had two reps that day, if I had five reps, if I had 10 reps. Whatever I had to do is what I had to do. So all the camp, I mean, played really well and then got to the second preseason or I guess played the Rams first preseason game, played a good amount in the fourth quarter. Um, Obviously wasn't satisfied with that. And then going into the San Fran week, you know, went through that whole, we had joint practice with San Fran, um, went pretty well, didn't get as much reps as I would want to. And then that's just part of the game, but um, get to the game and then my first my first live rep on special teams on punt um I'm at right tackle getting to my stairs balls hike you know I'm getting into my set and then dude flies blows me just smacks me right in my chest like (laughs) I was not expecting that at all like I'm thinking like I'm gonna be able to it is my first live rep so I'm like let me just think of my technique and all that nah like technique was done I was like I'm not gonna blow up again (laughs) so the next rep comes around, the next punt comes, um, same thing, right tackle. Get into my set. I'm like, yeah, I'm not getting blown up this time. Um, get into a quick set, boom, put, uh, strike the guy, shut him off. So I shut him on my inside. Running down the field, uh, the punt returners on my left side. And basically, I mean, I'm, I can't really give you, like, I don't really know the whole process because, like, that kind of, like, that, that whole injury and all that is, was a crazy time to me. So basically running down the guy, whoever I shut it off, 
I went to go cut off my right leg at this time that he pushed me in the back and felt my knee just pop. And like in the moment, I was like, there's no way. So like I get up, like I, I, I obviously fall, my knee gave out, get up, jog off the field. And then like, I'm just like, there's something not right right now. Like something doesn't feel right. And then what's crazy is like I was supposed to play basically that whole second half too. So get on the bench and then I'm just sitting there like my knee just starts buzzing, just starts burning, crazy sting. And I'm like, yeah, this 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 is not right. And then yeah, did the whole ACL test and yeah, it turns out I tore my ACL. And then yeah, man, like like I said, like that that first like three weeks, four weeks of that process, my brain just kind of like it's a fog right now. I don't even I don't even want to dwell on anything that that kind of will happen with it. And it's not nothing against you. It's just like that's how my body or my mind kind of adapted to that trauma or like that injury. Whereas like right now, I mean it feels great. Like went through the whole I'm at nine like nine months in a week right now of post surgery. You're and, inspired. Uh, Your story is so inspiring. I think that's one of the biggest things is, you know, you fought this hard to get there and then you had right. this devastating injury, but right. that didn't stop you either. You kept fighting. Yeah. That's all I know how to do. It was like, it's, I had I mean, great resources out here. I mean, I'm in, I'm in LA. So it was like, this couldn't be a better place to do ACL rehab. Like if I was in Wisconsin or if I was in Chicago, I mean, yeah, it would have sucked, man. Like it would have been cold up there. So, I mean, I'm down here. The, the Chargers, I mean, they, again, like, I played very well in camp. So, I mean, Staley, uh, what's the name, um, Tom and my library's coach, I mean, they all saw that I could perform. They knew I could ball. And I was blessed enough to obviously still be part of the program right now. So, um, yeah, like, so ended up going through all my rehab. La literally last Friday that just passed, I mean, finally – did the paper on like I'm I'm cleared to ball. So like, this past week or this week, um been the past two days OTAs been moving really well. I'm I'm feeling really good. My breaks feel really good laterally. Um I'm feeling really good. And now it's just kind of getting just getting the natural routine back, getting my eyes back, being able to see concepts, doing the whole nine or playing linebacker. So man, I mean it's it's a blessing to still be here and it's it just shows I mean I don't really, I don't know how to, I don't know how to fold, man. Like I, I, I can't give it up that easy. Like there's no way. And at the same time, I know I still have the ability. I know I can still fall. I love and that. I, yeah. That, and that's, all I back on, that's awesome. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's awesome, man. Like I, I truly, truly cherish every single day that I'm here. Um, Cause again, I'm, I'm a very realistic person. I understand how this works. I understand the business of it. So it's like I'm a I'ma just keep grinding like I do until until somebody says I can't do it. And then that's what it is. So I I'm and, I'm definitely enjoying it. And just to just to confirm it, like you're you feel one hundred percent now, like you're good, you're good to go. Like Yeah. After. So basically, I mean, I would say I would say I'm probably like 90, 94. Like I could I can okay. get I can get through practice and I can get through everything and everything feels good. Um I just got, I can't say a hundred yet. Cause I haven't hit nobody yet. Like I have no pads on. Yeah. I have to like, I'm, I'm really curious and I'm, I'm pretty confident in like my body and how, like how it's going to feel when I hit somebody again, like bracing off of my leg, you know what I mean? So in regards to like seven on seven, going through individual drills, um, doing everything I have to do in space as a linebacker, I feel great. Damon, um, you said you said a big reason for why you stayed so healthy and uh, been in such good shape was Revolve Nutrition, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. And Revolve yep. Nutrition, that's a uh, supplement brand that folks that are listening to the podcast, they can go on RevolveNutrition.com and find it. Yes, sir. So, I mean, even on my Instagram, too, uh, if, if you can link that. Um, yeah. So basically, short thing about Revolve, I mean, they're a small brand that just started up and it's one of my close friends, uh, older brother that started it up and just a, just somebody that I know, like, instead of working with a big brand, whereas like I may just be another influence or another person, part of the brand. I mean, I know I have a personal connection with, with who I'm working with. And like, I talk to him every other day on the phone, like that type of connection. So, um, yeah, they, they provide me with everything I need in regards to recovery, in regards to protein, um, even different resources on techniques on getting healthier, just like different stretches, stuff like that, man. They, they just 
it's a, it's a very, I, I want to say family oriented thing. So yeah, shout out to Revolve. Um, again, like uh, they have a great system going on where if you, if you need education on how to get healthier, what do you need to do? They, they have all that on the website and on their Instagram. So yeah, shout out to them. That's awesome, man. Well, uh, Revolve Nutrition, check it out, folks. And before we get you out of here, I know Rob wants to run through a couple of fun, lighthearted questions here with you towards the end oh. of the podcast to wrap it up. Rob, take it away. No, these are some real serious questions. Right, real seri- no, I'm just <laughs> Dude. All right. So I got to know, who's the funniest person in the Chargers locker room? Man, there's a we have one of the fun we have one of the coolest locker rooms in the league. I have to say, uh, I gotta say it's either so I'm a person like I I the the humor that I like like I'm a big dry humor guy, yeah. Um, and like and people that are goofy, so I gotta say like Chris Brump is one of the guys that um is one of the goofier, funnier guys. Like he plays outside linebacker for us, so and he's that's a, a, a good friend of mine too. So somebody that we just kind of have like the the connection, you know what I mean? Like that that humor connection. Yeah. So yeah, he he's one of the funnier guys. And then like on top of that, the dudes that are just like that awkward, you know those like those awkward funny guys, like where they're yeah, they're just like in the corner, not bothering nobody or nothing. Like um Nick Neiman is one of those guys in our locker in the <laughs> linebacker room. And Nick Neiman. Just like, you know, he's not hurting nobody, he's just like quiet. <laughs> it's like, bro, his his mannerisms and he doesn't it's the people that aren't trying to be funny that are funny to me. So yeah, it's probably it's probably those two guys 100 percent That's awesome. And then who's an undrafted free agent that you're like, you're like, yo, that's my boy. Like I I love that guy. Like that that dude, I'm like rooted hardcore for him. Like a college guy? Yeah. I like well, someone in the pros right now, like undrafted okay, um, free agent. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a few, man. Like, I mean, off the top of my head right now, um, Josh was that I mentioned earlier uh, with Detroit, somebody that, I mean, I witnessed the whole process with uh, him coming out. Um, Deontay Harris, he's a, the returner for the Saints. Yeah. Played against him in high school. He played Division Two as well. Um, another guy that's just like inspirational, motivational for me. And then, um, shoot, I guess like literally anybody that like I meet as, I, as I'm in the league and they tell me that they're a free agent, it just gives me some type of, I don't know, man, it just gives me a fire. It's like, dude, knowing that some guys are coming from free agency and making a name, like playing X amount of years, it just makes me feel good, man. Even, and again, I understand the business and I understand like the average of three years or whatever, but it just makes me feel good. Like knowing that you can be at this, this level of the profession and still ultimately make it and, and play a good amount of years. So. Yeah, every day is a tryout for like your team, the other team, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's stuff. how it goes, man. Yeah. It's like, and the thing is, if you don't even, and I, I try not to really think about it in that way because it's like at the end of the day, it's football. Yeah, it's just football, man. Like it's, it's yeah, sure, it's my profession right now, but football is a, a it's a game, it's a sport. Like you go out there again, like we, like we kind of mentioned before the podcast started, like you make mistakes, and it's just like that's what happens with the game. Yeah. So, um. And then, yeah, like, and then if teams like you, then they like you. If they don't like you, then that's just how it goes. Like, that's yeah. just how it, and that's just like human beings as a, as a whole. People like you, people dislike you. You can't do nothing about it. So whatever, whatever universe, whatever God has planned for me, that's what's going to happen. So I'm, I'm grateful awesome. to be here regardless. Though. That's awesome. We'll have to get Josh Woods on, on the pod. We'll have to get Josh Woods. So. Yeah, he'd be, a, he, he's a, he's a very entertaining guy. I think yeah, y'all should, I yeah. think you should. We'll, we'll sync on this. We'll get a, we'll get a roster of awesome undrafted free agents to tell for their sure. story. Um, all right. So this is going back home to Maryland. Where are the best crab cakes in Maryland? Man, um, I'm going to be honest with you. I do like crab cakes, but like I'm not the biggest crab cake like seeker. But um, in my area alone, uh, Box Hill Pizzeria has one of the best crab cakes I've ever had. Pizza right shop. down the street. Okay. Yeah, it's right up in uh, Abingdon, Maryland. Uh, okay, it's it's one of the best places. Shout out to um, Box. Shout out to Box Hill Pizzeria. Yes, you're gonna, Box Hill you're Pizzeria. gonna get that nil deal. You're gonna get. <laughs> yeah. I swear, I know. I get a little partner deal. Um, uh, but then like wings though, like I man, I love wings. Like best wings out in here, Maryland. like California out here, man. They don't got the best wings out here, man. So it's like best when I go cool. home, I really cherish it. So, um, my best spot for wings is uh Looney's Pub. 
either mm-hmm. in the in the Baltimore location, Bel Air, it doesn't matter. They have they have great wings. Right. Um, and then down in the city, a uh, place called Kisling's down there. Oh, you're not Ireland. done. You're, you're, you're gonna keep nah, going. Nah, nah. <laughs> like, <that sucks. laughs> like, what are you like, boy? I'm on. Yeah, I got Yelp. I got whatever. I got collections. I got pages, man. It doesn't matter. Well, just hit up David got. if I'm in Maryland for, for yes, sir. Yeah. So, all right. Um, you know, just a quick question here. So, Rick did an internship with the New York Jets, and it was right next to my college. So he would bring me in there for the food because I was a college yeah. student, and he was a first year out of college. Um, how's the food situation with the Chargers? They treating you nice? Like you guys got you guys got good food? Yeah, our food is definitely it's 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 good for because you have to think at the same time. Yeah, they have to cater to a lot of different people. They have to cater to people upstairs. They got to cater to older population, younger. You know what I mean? Yeah. So they can't necessarily freestyle or like they can't really sauce it up as best as they could. But overall, our food is 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 very good. Like our best days for me, like I love when we have like a Mediterranean plate, or if we have different um, like we'll have like poke bowls and like a different raw like ah- ahi tuna yeah. and stuff like that. Like that, yeah. those are my days. But like. I'm, and I don't like pastas or nothing. So like the days we got pasta, I'm like, dang, like I gotta, I gotta kind of freestyle. I gotta like get some rice, mix it with some sauce. You know what I mean? Like the yeah. college, like, college days. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, other than that, though, I mean, it, it's obviously, I mean, it, it's it's free. So it's like I can't complain. Like I'm not gonna say, <laughs> I'm not gonna say no. So, exactly. <laughs> yeah. For the most, part, it's good for the most part. Or add some salt and pepper, and it's pretty good. That's awesome, man. Well, two more questions. Uh, uh, we were talking about this before the podcast started, but favorite hobby outside of football? Yeah, so fishing is definitely a, a big hobby of mine. I'm starting to pick up reading a lot more. I'm trying to make reading a hobby. Like, I'm trying to make it so it's I'm not forcing myself to read. So um, fishing, I'm, I sound like an old head, man. Like, that's, that's kind of what, yeah, that's, that's what I like, man. And I also like to just, I, another hobby, I guess I got to say, like, I've been, just going out by myself and like going to get dinner alone like that sounds it sounds like kind of depressing but it sounds depressing but it's something I'm catching myself doing a lot of and I just enjoy my own company so it's like all right cool like that's that's a hobby I'm into well I you know I have to ask a follow-up question to that like you're not just going to Chipotle like you're talking about going somewhere nice and just having I'm talking about like going to a, a, a steakhouse or something like dude literally going to like my favorite place around here is called Habana it's a Cuban spot yeah. Um, I go to Havana, I get a table to myself and I just enjoy my company, man. Like, <laughs> I, like, like I like, I'll people watch, I'll enjoy my company and then I'll get up, come home and I'm like, I'm happy. I feel good. Lay down. And, like, <laughs> and, that, and my day is good. <laughs> if you, if you need, to, if you need to find Damon Lloyd on a bye week he, he is at Havana. So just oh, 100%. To... <laughs> yes. that's my spot. That's awesome, man. And then uh last question was, uh, what are you most excited for this year? What, like, what are you most excited for? It could be a game, could be just, you know, making, being on the team. Like, you know, what, what are you most excited about? Yeah. So, I mean, those are the two big, the big goals, obviously, like being yeah. on the squad, playing, I mean, playing Thursday night football is something that like, I, I can't wait to be able to do. Um, but I mean, the, the short-term goals right now, man, I mean, just to be what I am, like just, just to be a football player again, have the have everything I guess in regards to being 100% again that's what my goal is right now because if I'm not that then it doesn't matter the other goals don't matter exactly so, I mean taking care of what I need to do and then um on top of that I mean just also networking and kind of being utilizing my platform utilizing and like shout out to you guys for this because I mean this is 50 this is probably 75% of playing football is being able to network and being able to be in crowds that you wouldn't normally be in so yeah getting healthy again and just continuing the network and, and find different aspects of life that I don't know about so those are those are my big goals right Love now that and uh I know we're not going to be there when it happens but uh when you make your first tackle in uh in, in training camp I feel like yeah. I feel like we're just gonna go he's back yes sir yeah I have, <laughs> I have a whole trust me like I visualize it I have a whole aspect of things that I want to be able to like I can't wait man like it's it's going yeah. to be fun and like I have like I feel great right now man like my speed is there like yeah everything is lined up for me to just 
be a ball player again. So I'm really looking forward to it. Whatever the future has in store, the brothers brand are going to be rooting for you, Damon. It's been a real honor having you on our podcast and uh, we can't thank you enough for sharing your story. And we just want to thank you for that and wish you all the best going forward this season. I appreciate it, man. This is, this was really fun. And like, again, I mean, whoever's listening, man, if you needed that extra push or you just needed a little bit of motivation, I hope this provided for you because Man, the odds were they're always stacked against. And as long as you can find that last push to keep going, I mean, why not? Just see just see where it takes you. It's awesome. Damon, love it, dude.